This is Catherine. Um, this is my first time recording uh, a video like this, but I wanted to share a bit about what I was making recently and what I've been up to. And one of the things I've been um, experimenting with are motors, and motors in like a really simple way. Um, one of the projects that I'm working on involves making these little guys. Uh, so I figured I'd show you how I make one. They're really simple. Um, and then that might inspire you to look into motors for your own practice, or I don't know, uh, they're, it's perhaps a good DIY craft with your kid. So yeah, I'll just show you what this guy does. Uh, <laughs> so the reason I wanted to make these guys, first of all, um, because I knew that this was a DIY project that kids could do. <laughs> um, I was also inspired by a friend I made um, at the School for Poetic Computation, Max, um, who made a little creature that walked around um, using a simple motor. The project that I'm working towards um, regarding them, I want to have a whole bunch of these guys um, wandering around. And you can see at the top I've attached a bit of plastic. This is a lenticular lens. Um, so you can see that it magnifies. And then it also um, it refracts light in really interesting ways. So I want to um, eventually put these guys in front of a video projection um, and have them kind of interrupt and refract, blur um, the light coming from the projected image. Um, and I think it would be really interesting. I think there's something there about machines um, uh, interacting with the messages that we send using light um, and build off of some of my previous work. Uh, yeah. Anyways, uh, let's get started. <laughs> okay, so I'll start by kind of explaining what you're seeing here. Um, this is really simple. It's a, a very simple circuit. I got these parts, the um, motor and the um, motor anchor, I guess, um, as well as the um, battery compartment. I got it off of um, Amazon from a uh, mechanical like motor DIY kit. Um, yeah, they're really simple. Um, there's two batteries that you can see. I've actually taped them over because I was having some connection issues. Um, but yeah, they're just two AA batteries that slot in here. Um, this actually comes with its own kind of switch. Um, so you can see this part is metal, and when I connect, when I bring this down, it bridges the gap between this battery to this battery. Here, they're, um, they have wires that are sent out and that we can connect to the motor to make a complete circuit. Um, but to, in order to turn it on and complete the circuit, the loop, you have to press this down, right? Um, yeah, and then the uh, wires, you can see the red one and the black one. These usually symbol, symbolize um, ground and power. I believe that's right. <laughs> I'm, I'm new to this as well. Um, and they're just connected to these two little um, uh, prongs that come out of the motor. You can see there. Um, let me see if I can show you just the plain parts without this all hooked up. But really, all you need to know is that um, there is, the power is being sent out of this wire up to the motor. The motor interacts with it and that causes this bit to spin. You can see the shaft there. And then power flows down here, along here and back into this battery. And then this closes the loop to connect the, to create a closed circuit. Um, yeah, let me show you the individual pieces now. And here's what this, the motor looks like when you get it. I also have um, another motor I'll show you. Here's the 
here's another one. Um, this one, you can see that there's a bunch of gears attached to it. It's already a slower RPM, which is rotations per minute, um, which refers to how fast this shaft spins. Um, this is already a bit slower than this guy. I can't remember how high this is, but it's probably like thousands um, per second, I think. Maybe hundreds. <laughs> Um, we can see this also has gears attached and this um, kind of uh, translates the rapid motion that it starts with here into a slower motion um, for this shaft here. Uh, so I like using these ones for um, projects that involve slower motions, obviously, and I can even hook this up to um, I forget what it's called, but <laughs> hook this up to a little um, chip that will uh, come with a knob and you can actually reduce the speed. Um, here, maybe I'll run over and grab it. So here's an example of the piece that I was just talking about. Um, this maybe looks really complicated, but it's really simple to use. Um, you can see here it says DC in with a minus and a plus. And that refers to these two um, uh, outlets here. And then on the other side is where you would attach your motor. So this basically takes energy, you're sending energy into it. It's um, storing energy and choosing, depending upon um, how, like your, the setting that you can change here, how much energy it then sends out to the motor. And by changing the amount of voltage, you can decrease the RPM of your motor. Um, but anyways, we're not going to be using that because really all we need is um, the... We, we need a faster motor um, to create a vibration that will then send this um, moving. And that's also why I have this bit here. Um, and when I get to this part later, I'll, I can talk a bit more about it. But this basically um, offsets uh, the motion. You're adding a uh, what's an, an imbalanced or like asymmetrical weight to this, and so while it, it comes around, it uh, because of the velocity and the the weight attached to it, it sends it moving. Right. Um, if I were to hook up um, this motor now, and I can do that um, while I'm working on this. Uh, this would just spin and it you can feel it when you're holding it that it buzzes a little bit But it's not strong enough of a force to actually move the entire thing Okay uh, I hope this is making sense <laughs> uh, Anyways, so um, I'm just going to Continue this is the um, Battery pack without batteries in it. You can see how this comes down and connects the conductive metal here to this one and then the two wires look at this this YouTube moment <laughs> um, yeah and those two wires will connect with these little guys here um, and I usually loop them in but I'll actually solder them as well um, finally, this is actually really, really handy and useful. Um, when, I, when I was taught uh, to use motors, they um, really impressed upon, impressed upon us the importance of mounting our motors. And if I didn't have this, um, it would probably be difficult. I, you could use zip ties. Um, nail, not nails, um, there's little like metal bits that you can buy. Um, usually they're to hold um, pipes against a wall or even like cords against a wall. Um, that would work too. But these came with a kit and they're really handy. They're simple. So yeah, let's get started. Um, first I'm going to start by attaching the mount to my motor pack. I found these screws that fit in quite nicely. And through a bit of, I've actually made two, I've made three of these guys so far. I'm aiming for six. Um, and 
and so I've kind of got a process down now. Bring these back around. And you can see here I have the legs. The legs are actually just made out of um, simple wire. Uh, it's fairly strong, but still malleable enough that I can bend it with a pair of pliers. So you can see the legs come up behind the motor here. Um, I've kind of hot glued them in place. I don't know if this will work in the long run, um, but so far it seems okay. And then I also have a part here that holds up the lens. Um, and that actually, um, it's hidden by these batteries, but it's actually glued, it's bent and glued into place underneath here. I'm just testing to see where this comes through. I'm gonna add the lens on second. Yeah, second. There's kind of a tricky bit here I had to figure out in terms of what I put in first. Um, oh no, yeah, I have to do this first because the batteries um, will cover it. Okay, so. So now that that's in, I'm going to add my first pair of legs. Um, these are little legs that I made earlier. They're just bent wire. Um, I kind of like roughly estimated, wrapped it around this once and then back down. Really simple. Um, and in order to fit this over, I have to bend this. Just the legs back. Okay. And then I'll add on the other pair of legs. Okay. That's quite simple. Oh, one thing I did, which um, I thought was quite nice, was I led these leads through here to hold them down. I'm going to do that again. I could um, cut these shorter, obviously, but um, I realized that these, you can see, it looks like a single strand here, but underneath this coating, it's actually stranded wire, which means that there's several, like, very, very fine wires wound together to carry the electricity. Um, and it just means that when I cut it, um, and if I wanted to remove the plastic coating so that I could solder more easily, um, it means that it's a bitch to... <laughs> um, to to try and deal with the stranded wire. So I'm just leaving them long and leaving them um, solid at the end like this. Yeah. Okay. Oops. These legs are actually quite loose and I'm a little worried about them. Um, I'm gonna hot glue this in place to give it a little bit of structure. Um, yeah, I'm trying to think of these guys as prototypes. They're definitely not, um, the most solid or, um, what's the word? The most solid or, um, even that well designed in terms of how they're put together, but that's okay. Just trying. And... I have plans for them, but who knows if it'll work out. <laughs> OK, 
Okay, so here's the motor. Um, it slots in just like this. And then we're gonna rotate it. These are actually pretty fragile little prongs. Um, yeah, and then I can hook these up right here. Usually make like a little hook. What would be really good is if I could um, remove the casing here and then when I solder it won't melt onto it, but because of what I described earlier, I'm probably just gonna leave it because I really don't want to break the stranded wire um, and my wire strippers aren't very good. Anyway, so there it is. That's the basic um, premise. I'll probably hot glue this guy to here just a little bit, um, but if we turn it on now, it should work. Yeah, so you can hear it. But notice how it doesn't like vibrate, right? So if I put it down and turn it on, it won't do anything. And that's why we need a counterweight. Um, I've just been using simple paper clips. Um, I actually had, I have these little plastic propellers also from the kit um, that work quite well. Um, and what I do is I just take this and kind of twist it over to make this bit smaller. And you can see it kind of turns into clock hands and it will fit right on here. Oops, I made it too small. There we go. So if we turn it on now, I don't know if you can hear it, um, I can feel it moving. Um, and one interesting thing actually is depending upon um, which direction, I'm not sure if this is true for all motors, but it's definitely been the case for these ones. Um, if I were to reverse these leads, um, and I can do it in a second, um, the direction of the motor, uh, the direction the shaft turns would actually reverse. So here, let's try it again. So yeah, this turns, it moves so quickly, um, it's hard to see. I think it's turning this way. Uh, so if I reverse these, this is why soldering these leads onto it would really help, especially because it, now it's vibrating and things want to move around. So now it turns the other way. Oh, <laughs> oh no. <laughs> and uh, yeah, this is our little guy. You can see. He should wander. <laughs> there it goes. Um, and then all I'll do is um, bend and attach the lens to this part here. Here's the thing attached. I'll also probably glue this on a little bit to help. Um, Let's try and zoom out so you can see it. Yeah, there it is. making something like this um, using a, a high-speed RPM motor with an offset to create the vibration let me know it'd be super cool to see 
um, what you've done. It's getting a little YouTube-y. Um, yeah, anyways, um, and definitely reach out to me if you have any questions. Uh, I might do a live stream of this, uh, but I figured, um, yeah, this might be interesting to some of you guys. Okay, thank you. See you.